Dear Mrs Gillespie and family, I have never written to anyone before like this, but I wanted to let you know that there are people worldwide who feel for you and focus their love on you. Having seen the horror of what the IRA have done, we wish to send you our condolences and wishes. Mr Gillespie has not died in vain. One day there will be peace. Our father's family was killed in the Treblinka concentration camp in 1934. A sympathiser, Australia. I remember meeting a fella in you when I was 18 and he said something about joining the IRA. I said, joining the IRA? What are you asking me for sure? I wouldn't know who to ask. He said, Anne, I'm not asking you to help me join. I'm asking you to join. To tell you the truth, I got such a rush that he thought that I had something more to offer than marches and demonstrations. I said, I don't even have to think about this. I know what I want to do. This time, they chained Patsy to a van loaded with 1,000 pounds of explosives and forced him to drive it to the army checkpoint at Kashkwan, where it was detonated by remote control. Five soldiers, as well as Patsy, were blown up in that explosion. We are definitely in a safer place. But... Everything is so fragile. I think everything is so fragile. Um, now is a good time for peace and reconciliation and lots of healing to be taking place. You know, sometimes people say to me, don't you worry that you're going to open up something really awful or really hard. What they do need to know is that you won't be scared by what they open up, that you are not going to find it unbearable, that they can say whatever they need to say and it will be okay. Within two minutes I was crying and my whole story came out and I felt as if I'd been burst into telling my story anyway. It was bursting out of me. I knew nothing about the Theatre of Witness, absolutely nothing. I had um, two or three interviews with Taya in which she listened to what I was saying, took notes on what I was saying. She gets together such a diverse group of people and they, they all work together in harmony and it's, it's magic. <laughs> What we do before we go on. Rescue remedy. The troubles consumed me and it probably affected me more than people realise and more than I realised myself. For me, I think the personality and the person I am, it was inevitable that, that I would end up in the IRA. But I stayed over at my granny's house a lot. Her and I, we'd talk about how we'd sort this country out, how we were on the right side doing the right thing, everybody else was doing it wrong. But the Brits and the police had us terrorised. And over the years, we knew loads of people that had been killed, hurt, or arrested and taken away by the Brits and the police. But when my granny talked about her son who was killed on Bloody Sunday, she talked about him with great pride. It's, it's easier in some ways to, to identify with a survivor, um, but to be able to identify with a perpetrator and think, you know, had the, my life experiences been the same, I, I could be in those shoes. One particular night, I was called to man an explosives device. That day, I'd had a really sore head, and I didn't want to do this, not because my head was sore, but because I'd been a quartermaster running guns and explosives. I'd never been directly involved in, in having to kill somebody. And that's what they were asking me to do. I never said no. When I went to meet the fella that was doing the job with me, and there were steps for me to climb up, and as I was climbing those steps, there was a god-awful pain in my head. It was as if, Somebody had hit me in the head with a hammer. I got round to him and he said, Jesus, Anne, what happened to you? I don't know. My head's a bit sore. You better go home. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here with you. But within a couple of minutes, I was throwing my guts up. Anne, you have to go. Don't worry about this. I'll look after it. It doesn't look like they're coming anyway. And he made me go. It transpired that I'd had a brain hemorrhage and ended up needing full brain surgery. My father held my hand in hospital the whole night long, watching me throwing up blood, not knowing whether I was going to live or die. In the life that I was living, I could have ended up dead. Bombs, bullets, I could have ended up at life in prison. How hard would it have been for my daddy to hold my hand then? And I believe that God works in mysterious ways. It was one hell of a mysterious way to get me out of that situation. The Brits were never going to come that night.
because an informer had informed on the whole thing. What would have happened is that we would have been lifted, shot, arrested. They knew we were there. The Brits were never going to come that night, and I'm glad, because even though I wanted to be part of the cause and the justice of setting Ireland free, it was never in me to go so far down that road. It was never in me to be that type of person. Is it really in any of us? When I went into the room and I seen Kathleen and I knew who she was and I nodded at her and she nodded back and um, I was physically shaken, physically shaken and close to tears and thinking, right, how's this going to go? It was strange sitting there wondering which one's a R.A. woman now, which one's a R.A. woman. <laughs> and then we started telling bits of her stories and Anne started saying, and she looked straight at me, you know, and I thought, all right, this is her, this is her. Now, the hardest thing for me was to try and contact my son in England before he saw it on the news. I want you to come home, son. She know I've got my ticket, ma'am. I'm coming home in December. Ah, but I need you to come home now. Why? I'll tell you when I get you home. I'm not coming home until you tell me why. That's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life was to tell my son on the phone that they'd murdered his daddy. I can still hear him screaming. I'll kill those bastards. One night, about a month after Patsy's death, there was a howling wind, lashing rain. I couldn't get to sleep. The branches of the rose bush outside my bedroom window were scratching on the glass. I thought it was Patsy trying to get in the window. So at three o'clock in the morning, I got up and put my coat on and I went out and I cut that rose bush right to the roots. At the inquest, they talked about numbered body bags. And I realised they didn't know what was in the coffin. I had dreadful nightmares about Patsy being put together wrong. I couldn't get to sleep for the nightmares. It was horrific. One night I propped myself up in the bed and I took out my book, put on my glasses. I was terrified to go to sleep. I looked down at the door. And there was Patsy. Now I wasn't sleeping. I was propped up. I had my book and I had my glasses on. I looked back down to the door and Patsy was standing there wearing the grey cardigan he had on when they took him away. Look at me, girl, he said. I'm okay. Now you go to sleep. And that was that. No more nightmares. By the end of me telling all these women what I could of my story, the tears are running down my cheeks. I turned around to Kathleen and she just put her arms around me and gave me a big hug. And uh, she cried and I cried. Um, and I thanked her and she told me it was OK. And I couldn't believe it. Back then, I didn't know any better. I didn't see the bigger picture and I didn't look to the future to see what could possibly happen. And if I'm really honest with myself, being a quartermaster, moving guns and explosives around the country, then I was directly responsible for the deaths of people in this war. That's hard to take. I need to learn to forgive myself. Now, 20 years have passed, and I continue my work with ex-combatants. I'm still fighting my case for justice, and I won't give in. My family have grown now. And I have four beautiful grandchildren. My eldest son wears his daddy's wedding ring, which he had left on the windowsill that night. I can feel Patsy on my shoulder, guiding special people to me to help and guide me through. He's always there giving me strength. When I was picking Patsy's headstone, I wanted to write on it, murdered by the IRA. But instead, I had them engrave the words, 
Lord, may he be an instrument of your peace. I pray he did not die in vain. <laughs>